Right, guys. Hey, thank you very much for joining me. The rye field experiment. I'm excited about this one. I, I'm, I'm really looking forward, forward to this one. I got to slow down when I talk here. I'm starting to stumble. I'm so excited. Oh, whew, okay. Before we get into this field, thank you for 1,200 subscribers. This is awesome. If you're not a subscriber, you're going to want to subscribe because you're going to want to be here for this summer. I'll tell you that right now. I guarantee it. Um, yeah, th this is one. This, this little field here is, is my own personal little version of make farming great again. I don't care about the soybean markets or the corn markets or fertility markets and all that junk. Um, this field here is going to be my experiment uh, to see how much fertility I can grow on my own, how much I can reduce my costs on chemicals and reliance on chemicals. So again, if you're not a subscriber, subscribe because we got big goals for this channel. One, lots of agronomic data coming out this winter. Two, uh, as we grow on membership and someday YouTube money starts coming in, then we can start helping other farmers and uh, really move this channel forward, really, really actually be a, a, a help to farmers and not just a fake voice out there. And so guys, let's get into the rye field. I, I enough, enough with the other stuff. We took care of YouTube business. I'll let's take care of this business. I'm foaming at the mouth. I'm just, ah. So normal rotation for this field this year would have been soybeans. But instead last fall, we went to the co-op. We grabbed a six ton fertilizer spreader. We just drove under the chute ran a bunch of rye in, set the gate for what we thought we needed to try and get about 50 pounds of uh, an acre of seed, drove it around, it worked. Uh, just like Northern Brad over there in Wisconsin, Northern Wisconsin farming, uh, there's a couple little spots that drowned out and froze out, but for the most part, where we spread it, we had good coverage, it really came through. Uh, the old timers told me never give up on rye, and uh, the fact that it that it worked this year, you bet, I, I will never ever doubt rye again. I've never grown grain rye for myself, so just the fact of this field growing is an experiment to me. So the first experiment, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of the rye, we're gonna take some of the field, we're gonna combine it as grain rye. We got a good market for grain rye, we're gonna combine it as a grain. We have a good market for straw, so we're gonna sell the straw. We have a good market for hay. So right behind straw, we're gonna seed some grasses down, see if we can't take a hay cutting. Uh, so there's our three, our three cash crops per acre goal uh, test to see if it can work here. Uh, the other test will be, we'll put some soybeans out here. One, does the rye control the weeds for the season in soybeans or do we still need to come back and do a chemical cleanup? Uh, there will be some covers behind the rye uh, to help that, you know, because the rye eventually at some point is going to be dead. So we'll put some covers out here again after that to get green and growing again under the soybeans. Two, can we relay the rye out of the beans? So while the beans are growing and the rye is up here, can we come across and cut the rye off the top of the soybeans for the grain rye and then come back later and cut the soybeans as a soybean grain crop uh, again two cutting or two crops per acre there that one i'm really curious i that one i have my doubts i see the rye really kicking the crap out of the beans on this ground but you never know you never know win lose or draw the data will come out this fall i don't care what it what the results are the results are going to be what they are. You know what I mean? We're going to be honest about it because I don't want to make people out there being like, oh, yeah, look at that guy. He he did beans and uh, rye, and he said they relayed great. No, we will have the actual agronomic data compared to a conventional soybean field of, you know, the full tillage, you know, hybrid beans and, and all that stuff. Um, your normal your normal bean program. We'll have all the agronomic data to see how it really pans out. Would I have been better off just putting it to, to some no-till beans and doing a normal chemical program? We don't know. We'll find out this fall. <clears throat> the fun one I want to do is uh, behind the straw is put a cover crop mix in the corn planter and use the corn planter 
to plant that cover crop mix. Then come through next spring and plant corn on that same path. So they call it bio stripping. Clever name, makes sense. Um, and then next year we'll do nitrogen trials at different rates to see what that cover actually gave us for uh, where the sweet spot of, of nitrogen, applied nitrogen is. Did it save us 0, 10, 20, 50, 80% of our applied nitrogen program? We'll find that out next year. But um, And then we'll end the year... We'll end the year with another seeding of winter rye or winter wheat. So next spring, we will have a grass cutting before the corn. Uh, very simple to do. I'm excited. I'm really excited because there are three good trials out here. We'll have fantastic agronomic data this winter. Believe you me, we'll, have, we'll be discussing the, the numbers this winter. But stick around. I mean, talk about sustainability. Uh, not just, you know, soil health stewardship sustainability, but sustainability as the farmer trying to be here next year. Um, I mean, how do you do better than that? You got, you got good markets, and I'm just pandering to them markets. Just, just you know, taking advantage of what's around me. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I think 100%. I think they're all just going to blow the, the conventional soybean out of the water. But... We'll see if we can even get the soybean to grow with the rye. That's the only one that I'm really doubtful for. I know the one, if we can get a, a cutting of hay behind the rye on a per acre basis, I think we're going to absolutely murder conventional beans. And I understand some people don't have a hay market. Then, then you just hopefully have something there to control the weeds. So hopefully we don't have to do any herbicide rescue in the soybeans. So then moving forward, we can just use less chemicals. I mean, how great is that? And so, guys, I'm going to go get some more corn done. Thanks for watching today. Subscribe if you're not a subscriber. Hit the like button. Hit the share button. Tell your friends about this channel. Make farming great again. We'll see you next time.